And welcome aboard, everybody. I'm Steve Molesberg, joined today by a real, uh, and I mean this in, in, in a positive sense, certainly a dynamic duo uh, in the political world. And uh, we welcome in Tom and Deneen Borelli. Tom Borelli, PhD, contributor to Conservative Review. And Deneen Borelli, with her first appearance here with me, chief political correspondent for Conservative Review. Welcome to both of you. It Thank is so you. exciting to have now. Now, for people who don't know, I mean, obviously you're you're married. You're right. Mr. and Mrs. Um, does it present? But you're both on the same side of the political spectrum, so that makes it easier than if you were a liberal Absolutely. and a conservative living together. I don't know how how that would go. But what's it like, you know, being so um, politically uh, active and, and, and opinionated and and involved and, and living together? Well, I think it's great that we get to work together. We also get to travel together. And our message is the same. It's about liberty, uh, freedom, personal responsibility. And we carry that message on radio, on great shows like yours. Thank you for having Tom on all the time. Right, and then also, yeah, and uh, just uh, meeting everyday folks who love country and they, get, they feel like they can relate to us. There's a great relationship with people that we meet. And uh, it's just great to be in, to have this kind of opportunity to talk uh, about the freedoms of our country. And, and you live, you live what you preach, sort of, correct? Yeah, yeah. I and mean, she still talks to me, too, which is, <laughs> <laughs> which is important. But actually, it really is teamwork. It really helps because many times, then you'll be on TV with very little time to go. We got to jump in the car. Uh, a lot of things are on the go, filling in for Sirius XM satellite radio the last minute. So it really does take a teamwork and we play off each other, a little role play. And then, of course, after every interview, she criticizes me and I <laughs> criticize her. You should have said this, you should have said that. But that's, you know, uh, continuous improvement. Uh, no, and, and, uh, both coach and husband and wife. That's, that's the right. way it should be. You're, 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 each, you're both each other's worst and best critics, right? Exactly. Correct. I mean, that's oh, the, that's the way it should be. All right, yeah. let's get into it a little bit here. Um, the Paris uh, uh, Accords, we hear two sides. I mean, poor Steve, uh, uh, Stephen Moore, he goes on CNN, he's surrounded by people who are saying, no, we got to stay in. We can't, you know, desert the world. We have to be the leaders of the world. And it'll actually gain jobs. It won't lose <laughs> jobs if we, if we, so where, where are we? I mean, is this uh, one of the easy campaign promises for Donald Trump to keep? Uh, I mean, it's an, an, and it's a no-brainer. Do you believe that? But to me, I think it is. I mean, again, it was a, a campaign promise. And you have to look at how it's going to affect the economy, how it's going to affect jobs. And one of the things that uh, Trump always talked about, especially during the campaign, was the importance of folks having jobs to be employed. And so when you look at this, uh, this Paris Agreement and how it will harm our economy, harm jobs, and there are also the, op the possibility of electricity prices going up. That's the last thing our country needs. So folks are concerned about these kitchen table issues, electricity prices, for example. And I think that's how you can really relate to people without going into all of the details. Right. How does this affect you today? How does this affect you and your family? And I saw one of your pieces on Conservative Review uh, where you were talking about how this, I mean, Obama got us into this treaty. Right. And, and it's Obama who said, by definition, uh, electricity prices under my policies will sure. skyrocket. I mean, and this is something that's not talked about. And I think the Republicans need to do a better job of, of talking about it as well. Right? No, you're absolutely right. They're, they need to do a better job of messaging to all Americans to just talk about the policies and how, you know, even take what Obama said, just like you mentioned, for electricity prices to skyrocket. Now, let's say you're not even political and you hear that from a candidate. Why is that something that you would support? Why would you vote for that person? Right, right. It's no. basic it's yeah. issues. Now, so, so uh, I, this is something that could... Uh, I mean, I'm not implying that it's being done to placate the base, but there's been so many disappointments, uh, right. lack of progress on tax reform, lack of progress on health care, not moving the embassy to Jerusalem yet. Right, right. Uh, so this is something that I think, I think the base and the people who supported Donald Trump really need. Right. I think they both need it. I think Trump needs it. I think the, the base really needs it. And it, President Trump has a really unique opportunity, really, again, to connect with the American people. You know, he may be a billionaire, but in a lot of ways, he's, he's a man of the people. Remember those rallies when he was there with coal miners, with the hard hats? I don't think he forgot that. I think he wants to deliver for the American people. And there's a real opportunity to show real leadership. Who cares, really, what the rest of the world thinks? This is America first. He wants to make energy the uh, America the energy superpower and we have a huge opportunity for jobs economic growth and exporting energy make us energy secure there's not a better weapon for us in an international world than to be energy independent yeah 
And, and just a yeah. quick point, Tom mentioned coal miners. We've traveled the country. We've spoken at numerous rallies and events across the country. We've actually met these individuals. We've met the coal women and the coal men who are working every day to support their families. And they came to us with tears in their eyes, some of them, because they were concerned about the direction our country was going in. And so, you know, put a real face to the issue and look at how these, uh, the, the regulations on the fossil fuel industry, for example, are harming hardworking Americans. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and the, the media uh, mocks them as, sure. you know, oh, as, right. as almost said, they're some kind of cartoon being held up there right. for, and they don't really exist or they're on their way out anyway, and right. who cares that about matter. them? They, they might yeah. hang on to their Bibles or their guns yeah, or some yeah, other yeah, yeah, I've heard that before. They might right? somewhere like, <laughs> right. But those people, not us elites. Well, they would be deplorable. So I'm not sure if they'd true. be homophobes or xenophobes <laughs> or this or that of all, but Hillary was at it again yesterday, speaking of all that deplorables. Um, she was at some kind of, uh, and, and she can't control herself, and now she's gotten to the point where she's actually expanded the list of people she's blaming. But let's hear one remark that she made uh, yesterday. I take responsibility for every decision I made, but that's not why I lost. So I think it's important that we learn the real lessons from this last campaign. Because the forces that we are up against are not just interested in influencing our elections and our politics. They're going after our economy, and they're going after our unity as a nation. I mean, she's talking about herself and her party and her free speech fascist comrades. Yeah. Uh, she's the one who called half the population a basket full of deplorables. I take responsibility, but. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. Know, there's always a but. Yeah. Uh, she does live in a bubble, and uh, she's not clueless. She just does not want to take responsibility for anything. And look at how she left her supporters hanging. Uh, election right. night. It, 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 she doesn't care about anyone but herself, and that is evident in, in so many levels. Yep, Tom. Yeah, when was the last time she drove a car? Was it 20 years or so? I mean, she, you know, <laughs> right. she does really live in this bubble, a bubble. And getting back to energy, remember, she promised more coal miners, more on the unemployment line, and yeah. bankrupt more companies. Yeah. So, how do you connect with people in Ohio, West Virginia, Kentucky, and you're promising them you're going to end their jobs? But this time, she went a step further and actually blamed her own uh, Democratic organizations. Let's listen and watch. I set up my campaign, and we have our own data operation. I get the nomination. So I'm now the nominee of the Democratic Party. I inherit nothing from the Democratic Party. What do you mean nothing? I mean it was bankrupt. It was on the verge of insolvency. Its data was mediocre to poor, non-existent, wrong. I had to inject money into it. This is the DNC. The, the DNC to keep it going. All right. Well, I mean, I, yeah, maybe she's right. However, uh, we found out through WikiLeaks that the DNC was working to get her elected over Bernie. When Debbie Wasserman Schultz had to resign because of that revelation, she was so upset at the DNC and it was such a failed organization that she took the same day, and the media didn't talk about it, she made the head of the DNC, who just resigned, the honorary chairman of her campaign. That's how bad the DNC was doing. Maybe it was, but to bring in the DNC as an added reason why you lost? Well, it's classic Clinton. I mean, come on, what Love Clinton that. do you know <laughs> has taken responsibility for anything? What is is, is right? right? And uh, listen, she's doubling down, and every day she has to look in a mirror <laughs> and I try. I don't think they have a mirror well, in the house. Well, whatever. <laughs> I think but that's the maybe problem. Not. Maybe not. Is, there, is, crack. is there a reflection? <laughs> okay. They make crack. That's what they yeah, said. Yeah. That's where I was going. No, but, but 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 I mean, how significant is this? Because now I, I've heard even her former campaign, Brian Fallon, saying I wouldn't have said that, and I don't think she should be doing that. I think she's ticking off now. People who are sympathetic to her might have said, yeah, Russia, yeah, the FBI, yeah, Comey, they're all the reasons, but now she's saying the DNC? Sure. Well, she's delusional, A, and B, again, she doesn't care. It's all about Hillary or it's all about Bill. That's, that's the way it's always been, so it doesn't matter. Everyone gets thrown under the bus now because she lost. And how long is she significant, Tom? I mean, how long? Uh, she can't, you know, they talk about, oh, I'm not going to, are you going to run in 2020? <laughs> Run in 2020. I mean, is this a party that's totally stagnated? I mean, I believe me. I I hope she is the candidate in 2020. But all the they're, they're going to coalesce around Hillary Clinton again. No. And, and the more she talks, the more damage she's doing to herself, her family, even her daughter. 
Chelsea, who may think about running one day, you don't make you know you don't burn bridges, especially with the <laughs> DNC, because you know how vicious Democrats play. Yes, yes. Yeah. And she was the odds-on favorite to win, and she lost, so she's a loser. So I'd be I'd be careful if I were her. All right, let's talk about where we are. Um, we have keep talking. Yes, <laughs> by all means, she should. I hope she's not getting paid every time she sits at one of these, because that's very disheartening. Yeah. Um, where we are as a, as a country here when it comes to freedom of speech and the left, we see what goes on on the college campuses. Uh, we, we, we see the riots. They don't want the left to speak. They don't invite left uh, right people on the right. They don't want the right to speak. Um, and now you have the incident with Kathy Griffin holding up the head. To their credit, CNN you know, fired her and even people on the left, with the exception, I think, of Rosie uh, and Al Franken, Al Franken to an extent, are, are, are totally outraged. But you know, this goes. There's this lack of civility and, and hate and, and and disgust. But there's also the organized effort that we've seen against uh, conservatives, which has been going on forever. I mean, I was victimized by that uh, sitting at when I was on WABC, and I left there in, in uh, 2004. Mm -hmm. You know, three people in a basement would write letters and saying, you know, boycott or else we'll pick it and blah blah blah, and they oh. So I think conservatives are starting to fight back. But we saw what happened to O'Reilly sponsors pulled off where they're trying to do it to Hannity um, and this is at a very vital and crucial time where conservatives have to survive and fight back because if we're if we're silenced if we're gone what's left sure well try being a black female conservative I've, I've been criticized Married from day guy. one and, <laughs> and, and that, Me. right that's beyond a hat trick right yes, yes. Uh, but the thing is and it's it's people are afraid to be vocal and to be true to what they really think and believe and you got to have that well, you're mindset. Not, you're not, and I'm not. No, yeah. but I mean, a lot of people go underground and, and they, they try to ignore it. And that's the last thing you should do because that means the other side won. And so you, you got to stand up. Otherwise, as you mentioned, they're just going to pick off conservatives one by one. We've seen it with O'Reilly. We saw what they tried to do with Sean Hannity. Who's next? I mean, it's a huge slippery slope, but they got to be called out and they got to be held accountable. And, and, and we, I've heard from other uh, uh, black conservatives. I mean, I've seen how they're treated when they're politicians, when they're Clarence Thomas, when they're senators, when they're candidates. But you feel it, I mean, you, you feel it extra, extra well, hard? Well, look what happened to Herman Cain. I mean, they tried, when he was running for office, yes. and no evidence the women. of the accusations, yep. right. And yep. he just, you know, went away. That's what they want, yeah. and that's how they yeah. win. And they're, they're vicious at it, and we have to but, fight fire yeah. with fire. And, and you see it happen to you in your oh, own yeah. way also. Absolutely. Yeah. I get yeah. comments all the time on social media. Uh -huh. Yeah. He gets a lot of support, too. Yeah, I, I think you have to remember, as a sports person, you know it's a contact sport. Politics is, is a contact sport these days. And what the left really has done is they really use social media to a grand degree where they could send out a few tweets and actually scare a leader of a company to not advertise on, on a personality show. Right. That's really outrageous. That's, that's not leadership. But we have to match fire with fire. We need to rally conservatives to challenge uh, uh, the left when they do this. You know, there was a New York Times commentary about how to destroy the business model of conservative radio and TV. Now, that, that was in the New York Times, and they're actually doing it. Yeah. So they're not shy. We can't be shy well, either. I know Melanie Morgan uh, was on with Sean uh, the right. other day, and they're starting. They have a group right. that's uh, trying to fight back. And we are the majority. And if Correct. these co corporations are going to kowtow to a small group, so you better pull off, and they pull right. off, then they need to hear from us saying, uh-uh, right. you better get back on. Otherwise, we're right. not going to, you know, th that, it, look, it's a it's shame right. it has to come to that, but you got to fight fire you, with you, fire. You have right. to match it. And, and all, all we need to do is send around the county map of the last election, right? right? The yes. sea of red in these little right. groups. Where's your market? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> all right, right. Get, get, where could people watch you, read you? I mean, I know, talk about conservative review and all that. Where, where sure. could uh, websites give it out? Conservativeview.com. You can visit deneenburley.com as well. And, yep. and, and of yep. course, Tom is a conservativeview.com. Also, com. right for Newsmax, Newsmax Insider as well. Yes, That's indeed. Right. It's so great. Thank you. Thank it's you. so great to finally have Deneen on, and great to see you again, uh, my friend. Always. Yeah. And uh, they're great, as, as, as nice and happy and, and, and as they seem here, they're, they're nicer and happier off the air. <laughs> I was yelling at Tom for not wearing <laughs> green. No, wear green. but Tom and I usually have, have the, the same, same color <laughs> shirt and or then tie. We do. So I figured I'm going green, Tom. I've never seen Tom with green. And here we are, Deneen and I with the. Anyway, all right. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Deneen Burrell and Tom Borelli. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Make sure to stay tuned uh, and check in always at NewsmaxTV.com and Newsmax.com. Until next time, Steve Malsberg. See you then.